Here's why the Knicks are for real. Shocking the NBA universe, New York's the number six seed in the East, and with Derrick Rose in the lineup, they've got a record of seven and three. RJ Barrett and Julius Randle have developed into a legit one-two punch under their new head coach, Tom Thibodeau. So you're about to see a breakdown of how New York's on pace for their first playoff appearance in nearly a decade. Plus stay tuned to see whether the Knicks will add talent at the trade deadline. Right quick, only 14% of the people who watch these videos are subscribed, so pressing that sub box would go a long way. Also leave a thumbs up as it really helps out this video. Now let's get into it. Led by a pair of left-handers who've been the team's foundation, this year's been just the third time in the past 20 years that the Knicks franchise had a winning record after 35 games. Julius Randle's evolution this year has been remarkable as he's averaging career highs of 23.1 points, 10.9 rebounds, and 5.5 assists per game, and he's on pace to become the first Knicks to average 20-10-5 in a season. Named to his first All-Star team recently, it's pretty amazing to see how the former Lakers lottery pick has come, not only since his tenure in LA, but just since the 2018-19 season. Because while he's still only 26 years old, the thought of Randall putting together an All-Star season at this point in his career felt like a long shot, but that's no longer the case. The ability Randall's displayed from an early age has always been there, he just needed a situation that put him in the best position to succeed. He signed a three-year, $63 million deal for New York in the 2019 offseason, and now in 2021, it's all coming together for Randall in his second year with the Knicks. Coach Tom Thibodeau has helped him get the ball in spots where he can make the easy read on whether to attack or look for a teammate. The power forward's throwing as many passes as Draymond Green per game, and the only big man ahead of him in that category is Nikola Jokic and DeMontis Sabonis. In terms of his scoring prowess, New York's constantly running pick and roll action to get switches on Randall early in the shot clock, where he tries to then brutalize smaller defenders with his physicality. When that doesn't work, he now has a plan B. Randall's learned how to read the help and where to go with the ball when the defense collapses on him. Even when it doesn't look pretty, it can be really effective. But if Randall's playmaking skills were always just below average, his shooting touch had to be completely rebuilt. Julius has made offensive sets the Knicks are running even more dominant by shockingly taking the step into an elite shooter from distance. Randall's taking nearly five threes per game and hitting a career high by far 41.2% of them. But the big man hasn't just improved as a three-point shooter, he's improved as a shooter from every area of the floor. The man's making 80.2% of his free throws, he'd never shot better than 73% prior to this campaign. He's also taking and making way more long twos than ever before. Last year, Julius took just 8% of his shots from between 16 feet and the three-point line and made 35.8% of them. That's not that great. But this year, he's taking 13.6% of his shots from the same distance and making a remarkable 47% of those attempts. In his seventh season, Randall's finally becoming the player we all knew he could become when he played at Kentucky, the player fueling New York to a top seed in their conference and turning into an all-star before our eyes. This is who Julius Randall was always destined to be. The second year man, RJ Barrett, deserves recognition as well. He's bounced back from a tough start to the year and become a constant problem for defenses. His shooting was a concern heading into his sophomore campaign, but that's improved. Barrett is shooting 40% on three since the start of 2021, a 30 game stretch. There's still bad nights and his playing time has diminished with the trade for Rose and the return to health of Alec Burks. But when Barrett gets heavy minutes, it's because he's earned them, playing better than his competition on the depth chart. Sunday, he had 21 points in 21 minutes. The night before, it was 24 in 34. Last season, Barrett's three-point marksmanship was alarming, as was his free throw shooting. His accuracy from the line is key to his productivity because he's a candidate to draw fouls anytime he drives to the basket because he's got great size for a point guard and he takes the ball relentlessly to the bucket. In 14 games last month, he shot 47.4% from the three-point line. Also, Barrett's free throw shooting is much better. He's gone from shooting 61.4% last year to 72.9% this year. 
RJ is of course about to be named to the Rising Stars game, and given the fact that he's posted at least 20 points in 14 games at the midway point of the year, the Canadian more than deserves that spot. For casual fans, don't give up on him just yet. I know he didn't quite live up to expectations of a number three pick in his rookie year, but this sophomore year has been something special from RJ. He's winning the Knicks games. He looks like a legit two-way talent, so keep an eye on him. Derrick Rose is reunited with the coach he won 2011's MVP under in Tom Thibodeau, and since the Knicks sent Dennis Smith Jr. and a 2021 second round pick to make this trade happen, they have a record of 7-3 with D. Rose in the lineup. As he showed off by hitting his first six field goals against the Sacramento Kings on February 25th, Rose still has plenty of scoring ability left at age 32, but where he'll be most valuable for New York is off the court with his mentorship of young players like Emmanuel Quickly. More on the Knicks' rookie later on, but Derek's truly seen it all in the NBA, so he could really help the Knicks' young guys, having dealt with an ACL tear that forced him to adjust his game and become a sixth man. And last week, he was asked about his role on this Knicks team, saying in response, quote, I had the team on my back for numerous years. I I went through all of that. Now, I have the luxury of playing with young energy. They bring more life to me whenever I'm on the floor. And as of right now, the Knicks are essentially tied with the Celtics, Heat, and Raptors for the fourth best record in the East. Whether that's a product of the weak conference they play in is besides the point, because the usual laughing stocks of the NBA and the New York Knicks are likely going to make their first postseason appearance since the Carmelo Anthony era. After their 2013 second round series loss in six games to the Indiana Pacers, the seven and a half years that followed were pure agony as New York basketball was put to shame by some poor front office management. Knicks fans are now celebrating in the streets though, and at a low capacity, fans are finally allowed back at Madison Square Garden, which is great to see. These 2021 Knicks have won with a workmanlike approach. They do it with the second best defense in the NBA and an all-star in Julius Randle. In terms of whether or not they should make a trade, the Knicks 25th pick in the 2020 draft, Emmanuel Quickly, has been a surprisingly solid piece for them, averaging about 13 points per game. So New York could deal quickly, plus some bench pieces like lottery picks OB Toppin slash Kevin Knox to acquire a veteran on the perimeter who could help them win now. But while the Knicks are a piece or two away from competing for a chance at advancing to the finals, I don't think it makes sense for them to give away their developing players, especially with your main options still growing and yet to enter their primes. Because Barrett's only in his sophomore season and Julius Randle won't hit his basketball prime for another two to three years. So I think the Knicks should stay patient, make the playoffs this year, gain that experience, maybe trade for the star in 2022. But for the time being, the Knicks have some damn good pieces that could help them. As with the screen-setting presence and rebounding fiend Nerlens Noel in the starting lineup, the Knicks are 6-3. Let me know your favorite part about this Knicks team down below and whether or not you think they'll make a trade. Keep watching some of my recent uploads. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.